I'm now going to show how we do OCS, or how we do reverse engineering, from a code base into Studio. We have a different technology right now that we've built that will read a source code and will translate that stuff, pre-compile it, and figure out what things need to be created within Studio. Uh, we are currently working on making ACS understand code as you type and as you create things to reverse engineer things on the fly. But that's not done in this version. So right now, what we have is what we uh, what we have is uh, OCS. I'm going to again start with Studio, and I'm going to create a blank model to import this stuff into. You can you can create one uh, uh, using the existing model if you want to also. Um, by default, I'm going to pick what type of language I want to reverse engineer. Here, I'm going to pick C code. I'm going to put this in my test models area. I'm going to call it reverse code model. This will create a model, just a blank one with the simple um, ACS uh, elements and the C profile that I need in order for the appropriate stereotypes to be applied to the elements I'm reversing. I can do my normal behavior that I like to do to, cl to clean up my model, to unprotect it, to create a new package profile, and drag these elements into it, and then reprotect it, copy the key, and there I've got my starting point. I'm going to put these, the, the the code that I'm going to read and I'm going to put into a package. So I'm going to have the code call this like a code package. Just so I have some kind of source code uh, location to put it. I now I'm going to go to Tools, OCS, and pick the appropriate language that I want to reverse. C, C++, C Sharp, IDL, Java, Ada. I'm picking C because my source code is a bunch of C code that I have sitting out here. And I'll show you what that looks like. I just have this... C code that was something that was generated from even from within Studio at some time in the past. I just wanted to reverse engineer this stuff to show you what that would look like when I'm reversing. I pick where I want, you know, what's my model I'm going into. I have a settings file. I'm going to create a new one. And it's going to be some new settings file. Uh, yeah, same. So that's a new settings file that I created there. What's the root object where I want to bring it into? I actually want to bring it into that package. There's my code file. I can create a new one at that time. I'm going to pick a root directory in my file system where I want to pull this stuff from. Um, and I have it specifically inside my temp. Read me junk. If this was some kind of Microsoft project, you can actually load up the project files. It'll give you all the make file conditions that you need to know. Um, if it's something else, we have a legacy profile stuff, we can actually load up those things to bring up the initial conditions that I want to do. And I'm going to save this on exit. What this is saying is look here in my DB junk, look for C files, search the subfolders, reverse engineer the code bodies. This is the type of files I'm looking for. These are the headers and CPPs. And I'm going to say search all those and bring them in. So that gives me all the CPPs associated with that directory. Here is where I can define stuff. So if I have compiler directives, if I had something inside those code files, like uh, if it says it's Unix versus Windows, I can actually put a define here, define those compiler directives. I also use this define statements to actually eliminate errors that read during the compilation, because we actually try, are trying to compile this set of code as a pre-compiled set of things to know that it's something in how the link file we create um, basically a bunch of uh, uh, keys and values that we store into the model so we know that we, where they all exist. So I'm not going to do anything yet, but I would actually do, define some kind of a compiler directive if I needed to here. Here's where I do an include directory. So if I have something that I'm including from somewhere along the way, I can put my own in. So I have some libraries I'm including, like standard I.O. that would be out there in the environment. I also can include um, artisan RCS language directory, so if I do that, it automatically drops in that. I can include any kind of standard stuff. I don't have these defined, either one of them, but I can define those as include those sets of things, Microsoft stuff, or just normal Linux type of directories, or I can define my own. I can create my own uh, structure of things where I can include a path that I've specified on where this stuff's located. I can also 
pick a spot in the model where I've already reverse engineered a set of libraries to know that, oh, this is the location where I've defined what I'm trying to look for. I'm not going to do any of that right now. At this time, I can say detailed log output. If I really wanted to see the details of stuff, it slows down the reversing process, but you can see more detail about what the errors are, why they are, what's existing, and there are some intermediate files that you can load up that actually go into your local app data, local temp directory that shows the intermediate files of how it reads these. It takes all the CPP headers, combines them into one, uh, strips out all the comments, and then actually that's what's getting processed through our stuff. So if you had errors, we can actually walk you through that process of how to look through those files. I can log it to an output pane if I want to, but I'm going to leave it brief and not do anything else and just click, click Next. This is going through loading up those files, um, doing analysis against what it needs to, uh, to see, and it's going to show that right now I have 11 errors and 51 warnings. And really the errors, that if you look here, it just doesn't know these types. So pup status p doesn't know what the type is. So those really aren't that important to me. It's just saying if I, if I don't know the type, it's fine. I'm still going to create the right modeling structure. It just doesn't know how to interpret what those things uh, mean. And those are in some library file. If I include the right path, I could have actually done those. So if I just click Next, after this point, it's going to actually start to reverse engineer and to create those things into the model. I could have always went back, done more definitions, gone forward, done analysis, gone back, done more definitions, more include statements, and then forward. It's not until you click this last next that it starts to create the modeling elements. Now you don't want to create the modeling elements um, up front and then try and do the error debugging because it takes a lot longer to do the synchronization between what's inside your model and what you have on, on your file system. As long as your model's blank, it's pretty quick about this stuff. And you can see that it says an estimated time of three minutes, um, but it doesn't really take, it won't take that long. Um, but what we're doing here is actually going through the stuff that we've analyzed. We've created actually a tokenized tree set of things. So we have all these names and tokens and values, include statements, uh, uh, inheritance, uh, composite structure, attributes, anything like that is all being read in and actually uh, modeling elements are being created for all these types of things. And I'll let this go through and wait till it completes. And there it's finished with its uh, reversing. And I can just click the Finish button and save off that information. If I co come here, you can see I have a bunch of new types. I can look in here. I have all these new classes. There are no diagrams that got reversed because I just have the code. I now can go and create a new diagram, UML, class diagram. And I can drag out elements that I know have some kind of structure associated with them, um, it, you know, just knowing the, uh, the, the code base that I had that I have there. Of course, many, many different types of code, depending on where you're going to try and par uh, carve off the part that I want to make modifications to, you kind of have to actually study your code a little bit to know what I've got and where I'm starting from. So here I've got stuff. Let's expand this. If you have CalDefs, I've got some internal classes. So these are actually subclasses defined within this class. So I drag that out here. I've got the upper one, which has this and it has any types. If this thing has uh, many attributes and or functions in it, they will show up as elements. Here, I'll show you one that looks uh, like that. So if I take main, main has all these functions, operations already existing in it. And you look, I drag it out here, it actually shows all these elements. I can choose to then use view options to hide all the private items so I can always see the public interfaces. And I could apply that to that, that class. I can also undo that. Now, another option you can do if you wanted to have all things drag onto a diagram to have those options. I click on the diagram background, say view options, select the type of thing I'm going to drag out there, and deselect that. So that says everything I drag out here from this point on, if I drag another main, will only take on that behavior. So it didn't show all the elements, it's only showing the public stuff. Now there's no public. And all these are is two points of view into the same data. So this is just two ways of looking at the same main function, but these are two points of view into that. If I right click here, I can say populate all related classes, and it populates the subclasses or the subtypes that are defined inside of here. I can do the same thing here, populate all related classes. And you could go through each type of thing within here, superclasses, subclasses, 
but I'm just saying all related classes, and this is going to give me everything. This is a pretty simple set of code that I had here, but all I had was, you know, these, these things with these subtypes. And you can see that it's all these attributes that exist within the model structure. I can also, I could also could have done view options for my attributes, and I could have said, no, don't show the name. Same thing here, if I right click on this, view options for this type of thing, for this uh, uh, elements that I'm looking at, I can just choose to, well, really all it is is all the attributes I'm just showing. Everything is public, private, all that. And if I, if I select any one of these, you can tell that they're all public. So I could have said, hide all public attributes too if I wanted to. And it, you know, it just cleans it up a little bit nicer. But this is all has to do with just your point of view and how you want to see it. So this is how we reverse engineer and the populate function allows you to populate and, and create uh, everything again and again. Thank you.